Hello again. This is the sixth video we've made this year showing how we grow dahlias in our garden in the north of England. It's now early November and although the dahlias haven't been ki killed off by any frost, the reduction in daylight has made them start to look a bit sad as you can see. Jeff's a bit sad too because it's getting to the end of the season and he will soon have to put the tubers into winter storage. I try to cheer him up by say, saying things like never mind at least you'll be able to take me Christmas shopping or perhaps we could decorate the bedroom. <sighs> For some reason that doesn't seem to cheer him up though. Anyway here he is to tell you what's been going on in the garden over the last few weeks. It's the 16th of October at long last we've been getting quite a lot of rain. The front of the house usually gets more sun than the back and some of the dailies here are doing pretty well. There's my favourite Wonders Capella still in its, full, in its full glory. But some of the varieties in the back garden where we get less sun are beginning to look a bit sad. So I've decided that later in the week I'm going to start cutting back the tops of the dahlias. If you watched my previous videos you might remember that I've been trying to cross-pollinate these five ball-shaped varieties to get some seed heads and then hopefully some seed to sow next spring. Well there are quite a lot of seed heads, whether there's any seed in, in them it, for that is, is for another day, I don't know. But before I take the tops off all the dahlias, I'm going to go around and take off these seed heads, put them in water and try to keep them going for a bit longer. Here they are in a drop of water in vases. I'll leave them like that until uh, I'll, I need the space for something else. Although I do know from past experience that some of them will rot, go mouldy, in which case I'll throw them out, they won't have any seeds in them. But I'll keep the others until as late as I can. In the last couple of weeks, a few of the dahlias that I grew from seed this year have come into bloom for the first time. And I'm quite happy with some of them. This one's quite nice. Salmon coloured cactus. And I think that that one's very nice. That one's not worth keeping. But this pink Medium cactus definitely is worth keeping. Quite pleased with that one. There are quite a few that are still not flowered though. Look at that one, eight feet tall. And though there's a bud there, I want, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's going to flower before the frost at all. What shall I do? Shall I hang on to it and see how it is next year? Can't decide. This seedling's grown to about seven feet tall. I like the first flower and I like the ones that have come later. I think next year I'll probably put it at the back of the border and hope that it grows to seven feet tall next year. It's now about ten days later, the seed heads are starting to go yellow. So I've hung them up in the greenhouse. I'm hoping that all the moisture will drip out so that any seeds in there will dry and be ready to, to uh, put into packets. I'll leave them hanging there until each seed head has gone brown. Then I'll take them into the house and dry them off thoroughly. It's near the end of October and I'm down at the seedling bed. Here are the ones that I'm going to keep for next year. Of the ones that have flowered, I've probably ditched about 60%, kept 40% to see what happens next year. But there are still some that don't even look like they're going to flower. Now the seedling bed is at the bottom of the garden. It perhaps doesn't get as much daylight as the other places, so it's not really the best of conditions. But even so, this one is at the front of the bed and so it's got more sun than others. And the fact that it's not flowered so far suggests to me that it's going to be a waste of time. Over the years I've kept seedlings for a second year when they've not flowered and usually they're very disappointing 
Perhaps only 5% produce a bloom at all and most of those have been rubbish. So I'm going to throw this one now. So it's now on the compost heap, which is starting to bulk up quite nicely. Here's another non-flowerer. Here it is and as you can see it's produced quite a sizeable tuber which I'll need to make sure I destroy. I don't want it growing again next year. Goodbye. I'll keep the rest of the seedlings going as long as I possibly can to try to bulk up the tubers so that they're more likely to overwinter. And also to give the ones that haven't come out to, into bloom yet a little bit more time to see what they look like. It's the 28th of October. That's quite a few days since I said I was going to start taking the tops off my dailies. But as you can see I've not gone, got round to it yet. Since I spoke there's been another mini heat wave. It's been up to 20 degrees which for the end of October is pretty remarkable. And some of the dailies are still looking fabulous. So I can't bring myself to do it. Maybe I'll start next week. In the meantime, a couple of seedlings have come into bloom for the first time. This one's a nice colour. But it's a neither here nor there form. I don't know whether I'll keep this one. But I will be keeping this one. Little yellow, it's almost pom size I would say. It doesn't reflex round the back too well at the moment. But I'm going to give it another go. And here's another seedling, another, yet another pink cactus. A bit floppy stemmed, but it's a nice flower, so I'll give that one a go next year as well. While I've been waiting for the dahlias to start going off, I've been taking the time to collect some leaves off the street. I'll mix the leaves with the stalks to make some compost. And for the first time I've been down to the local stables and got some horse manure to mix in with it as well. I don't usually do that but seeing it was free I thought I'd give it a twirl. It's the 31st of October and that very tall seedling that I was talking about earlier has finally come into bloom for the first time. Unfortunately it's also going to be the last time. Open centred, not good enough I'm afraid. That's a shame because the tube was a cracker. It all goes on the compost heap. Tuber and all, I chop it up and that'll make it rot down faster. As you can see, even before I start digging the dailies up the compost heap's getting quite big and I'm mixing the, the stalks and the flowers with leaves and, and these are the leaves I've got, I picked up out of the park yesterday morning. It's the 1st of November. I've finished digging up all the salvias and all the fuchsias and potted them up. I'll be keeping these in the greenhouse over winter. The weather is now on the turn. It was raining last night and they're forecasting strong winds for tomorrow. So I've decided that I ought to start cutting back the dahlias and as you can see I've already started. I've chopped off the top third or a half of each plant and I've put them on the compost heap. Having taken all the flowers off the dahlias the plants themselves can then put all their efforts into producing bigger and stronger tubers rather than producing more flowers. Well, they said it was going to get windy, but fortunately all the dahlias have now been chopped down, so there's nothing to blow over really. The tops of all the dahlias are now on the compost heap. 
That is, apart from the ones that were affected by the red spider mite, I've chopped those right down and put the greenery on the, into the recycling bin. I've never had red spider mite before and I don't know whether they, the mites would survive on the compost heap and cause problems again next year, but I thought the safest thing to do would be just to get rid of the lot. I'll now leave them like this for a couple of weeks before I start digging, digging them up. In the meantime the tubers will have time to mature and in the, in the same time the compost steep should go down quite a lot as the, uh, the stalks start to rot so there'll be more room for the, all these stalks later. There are just two more seedlings left to come into bloom. There's this one and there's this one. What will they be like? Well, here's a cliffhanger. You're going to have to tune into the to the next episode to find out. Well, that's it for this episode. The good news, at least I can see where Jeff is in the garden now. <laughs>